In this screencast, we're going to see what happens to the bond stretching frequency in the hydrogen chloride molecule when the hydrogen atom is replaced by a deuterium atom. To do this, we need to use two equations. The first of these relates the bond stretching frequency, given by the Greek letter nu, to the bond force constant k, and the reduced mass of the system, given by the Greek letter mu. The second equation shows how the reduced mass for a diatomic molecule is defined in terms of the masses of the individual atoms, m1 and m2. Looking at the specific example of HCl and DCl, we can write expressions for the two bond stretching frequencies. The ratio of the bond stretching frequencies is given by dividing these expressions. Assuming that deuteration doesn't change the bond force constant, we can cancel out the constants and show that the ratio of the stretching frequencies is equal to the square root of the reduced mass ratio. Look again at the expression for the reduced mass and now set M1 as hydrogen and M2 as chlorine. Assuming chlorine is present as the most abundant isotope, chlorine 35, we can put in the relative atomic masses for the two atoms. We can see that the reduced mass for HCl is equal to 35 over 36, which is approximately equal to 1. Doing the same thing for DCl, with an atomic mass of deuterium of 2, we can see that the reduced mass of DCl is equal to 70 over 37, which is approximately equal to 2. This is a general finding. When the atom that is bonded to the hydrogen is sufficiently massive, the reduced mass of the deuterium compound is approximately twice that of the hydrogen compound. Putting the two reduced masses into the formula for the ratio of the bond stretching frequencies gives us the ratio as approximately the square root of a half, or 0.707. Again, this is a general finding. As the heavier the atom or the group bonded to the hydrogen atom, the better the approximations and the more accurate the relationship. Infrared stretching frequencies are normally given in wave numbers, but since these are proportional to the bond stretching frequencies, the same relationship exists between them. This means that if we know the stretching frequency of the hydrogen compound, we can predict what happens to this stretch on deuteration. For example, the hydrogen chloride stretch is observed at 2,990 wave numbers. So we can predict that the deuterium chloride stretch would be observed at 2,110 wave numbers, which is close to the observed value.